Hey y'all, how's it going? My name is Bennett Sullivan. I am the CEO and co-founder of ToonFox. Thanks so much to Deering for having me. I'm a really big fan of all that they do for bluegrass and other genres of music. Anything that includes a banjo, they are just an amazing company. Um, I have my Saratoga star right here, and I'm really pumped to share with you my arrangement of dueling banjos uh, via the ToonFox app. You can get the tab for this video by clicking on the link below this video. It'll send you to the ToonFox website where you'll have all the practice tools you need to get started learning this tune. This lesson is split up into seven different sections. The first five are the first five mini phrases that you hear at the beginning of dueling banjos. And then we get into the breakdown section, which is the fast part. Um, and then finally the ending. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. And thanks so much for watching. Let's take a look at the first phrase in dueling banjos, which is a strumming pattern. On banjo, you can strum a couple different ways. The way that I'm doing it is with my thumb, but you can also use your index finger for upstrokes. And what I mean by that is strumming down with your thumb and then up with your index, like that. So I'm not very good at it. I strum with my thumb. So I'm doing downstrokes and upstrokes with my thumb. So the phrase is G, 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 and then C, G. That's it. Just two chords. You're going from G to C and then back to G. When you're strumming the banjo, you want to think about where you are in the relationship to your bridge. If you strum close to your bridge, it's going to be really bright sounding. But if you strum closer to the neck, it's a little bit warmer. So I'm trying to strum around um, kind of like with the circle of my banjo head. So like that. Kind of going around that. I just feel like that gives me a really warm tone. So that's the first phrase. Practice that a bit and then move on to the second phrase. 
Okay, this second phrase is one that is the most popular phrase in dueling banjos. Uh, whenever I am with people that aren't necessarily the bluegrass musicians, um, but are great musicians in their own right, they always bring up this phrase. And it's just because everybody knows. Da -da 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 -da. So my first challenge to you is to try and learn this by ear. That's a really great way to get the music in your head and internalize it while training your ear. Um, I'll give you the first note. It starts on the second string. So from that point, da, 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 you can go note by note and try to figure it out by ear. But if you just want to move on and get to the next part, you can do that as well and you can check out the tab and I'm also going to show you how to play it right now. But learning by ear is always the best way to do it um, because music is an oral art. So let's get into it. So you're starting on that second string and what you're doing is you're playing thumb and then you're gonna play with your index finger that C note, which is the second, the first fret, second string. And you're gonna play thumb index, so like that. And this is a single string phrase. And then I'm gonna play thumb again on the third fret, second string. After you do that single string phrase, you're gonna play with your index finger the open B string. And then first fret, second string, and then second fret, third string. So what I'm doing in my right hand is I'm assigning uh, these notes on the second string to my index finger, and then the ones on the third string to my thumb, except for that first three notes. Index, index, thumb, index, thumb, thumb. So we're going to do this a lot throughout dueling banjos, so get used to doing that um, with this first lick. You may see me using my thumb for a lot of these melodies, and that's just because I like using my thumb. It's a personal preference. Um, for this song though, if you're an intermediate player, I would recommend that you assign a finger to a string. So thumb on the third, index on the second, and then middle on the first. Okay, so practice that second phrase a bit and then let's move on to the third phrase. The third phrase of dueling banjos is the melody for Yankee Doodle and it sounds like this. So it starts out with your fourth string as a pickup note. So if you were gonna count this, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four, one. You can include that pickup if you want to, and you don't have to. Uh, I think there are different versions online of people playing this with and without it. Um, that's also a personal preference. I included it in the performance of this video just because I like the way it sounds, um, but you certainly don't have to if you don't want to. So on to the rest of the melody, you're gonna go. Once again, we're assigning our right hand fingers to a string. We have our thumb on the third string. And then our index finger is playing an open B string pretty much the entire time. Like that. So that's a pretty easy phrase to figure out. Learn it, practice it a little bit, and then let's move on to phrase number four. Phrase four is the most difficult of the five phrases in dueling banjos, and the reason for that is because you're actually doing this phrase in three different keys. And this comes after the uh, Yankee Doodle one. So it starts out with a single string phrase on the third string, like that, thumb, index, thumb. And then we're gonna play up the G scale. That's it. So there's not much going on in your left hand for this first part of phrase four. So let's look at the next key. We're gonna do this in keys C and D next. We just did it in the key of G out of our open G chord. And now what we're gonna do is bring our, our index finger to the fifth fret and we're gonna bar it um, just the bottom three strings. We're playing the exact same phrase here, but you do have to change which fingers you use for this. So that's what it looks like. Instead of using your middle finger and your index finger, because your index finger is the bar, you have to use your ring finger and your middle finger. So it might require a little bit of practice to get this down. But 
But the good thing is once you learn it out of the C bar, all you have to do to do the D one is move it up two frets and you have your D chord. Like that. So phrase five is just a variation on phrase number four, which was. So instead of playing that, all we're doing is. It's even simpler than phrase number four. And then for C. And then for D. And that's it. You're just going up and down each of these key scales out of the bar positions. So let's talk about the breakdown a little bit. I'm going to play it slowly for you first so you can try and figure it out by ear or using the tab. And then I'm going to talk about some key parts. I'm going to take it from the lead in to the breakdown section, which is the Yankee Doodle melody. Three and four and. <laughs> There are a ton of different arrangements for this breakdown section out there, but I just wanted to present this one to you because it gives you a good foundation um, for what you can do with it. Speaking of that, you can actually go into the Toon Fox arrangement of this song and switch out the different licks. That's one of the main things that Toon Fox is able to do is give you multiple variations over the same song and you can make it as easy or as hard as you would like. So go check that out if you have a chance after you learn this main arrangement. Like I said before, the arrangement for this version of Dueling Banjos is pretty simple. So I'm uh, taking this C chord and I'm just playing a forward roll over it for the most part. And then I'm throwing in a couple alternating thumb rolls. So that's kind of like a uh, four, two, five, one, and then three, two, five, one with a hammer on and a pull off in there, of course. And then I'm doing this typical Scruggs lick. Okay. And then a forward backers little thing. Another very stock uh, Scruggs D lick. And then back to that um, second measure. That's kind of a popular thing to do is you play that Scruggs lick and then you'll slide into that next note to uh, get you to the C chord. And this is a C seventh shape. So for this next part, I'm doing a C seventh shape here and this is all backwards roll. And so for that, I'm actually getting this note, it's a C sharp. It's on the third string, sixth fret, and I'm using that as a transition note to slide back. I'm sliding back to the second fret, but I'm not actually gonna pluck that note. I'm gonna hit a G string, because that will get me to. And then the rest is what you know before. So pretty simple there. So I put a lot of repetition in this arrangement because I want it to be easy to grasp onto so you can build that foundation 
fairly quickly and then switch out the licks in TuneFox to create your own arrangement of this. So the first thing we're gonna look at in this ending is the tag. You're gonna go. And then what Eric Weisberg does in the original recording is this hammer-on phrase, which is kind of standard bluegrass banjo. If you've studied Cripple Creek at all, you know this phrase because it is the um, main phrase that you're learning from the song. Uh, you're using an alternating thumb roll, so three, two, five, one, and then a three, two slide. It's very, very similar to Cripple Creek, actually, because you could even go. But what he does is this single string phrase. Two. So you're going from the second fret third string to the open third string. And then. Like that. And so now we get into the shave and the haircut. The shave and a haircut and two bits lick is the ultimate ending lick for banjo players and it sounds like this. What we're doing for this ending is playing a double shave and a haircut. So that's what it sounds like. And then you're gonna do that one more time. So what I'm doing here is I'm in this kind of like triangular position. This is the E minor position. Um, and it's a really popular position if you're familiar with Scruggs banjo playing. Um, up the neck, this is kind of like the home base. And what we're doing is we're sticking out our pinky to the 11th fret second string. And you don't have to have this position on when you're doing uh, the shave and a haircut. You can definitely do it like this. Um, it might be a little bit easier. Like that and just transition back when you need to get those other notes. Um, but I like to play it like this because it gives me this position and I don't have to do any shifting in my left hand. So I'm stretching out my pinky and I'm playing those two notes, those two bottom strings together. And then I'm gonna play fifth string, second string, and they're the same notes. And then thumb is gonna come down to the third string. And that's the lick, so. You can tap that rhythm out if you want to get that down before uh, jumping into the melody. Da, 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 or. So we're going to do that together. Three and four and. Again. Like that. Okay, so after you do those shave and a haircuts, we're gonna move on to this A chord. So you're gonna put on this A chord, and then just practice moving from the A to the next chord, which is a D chord, D seventh. So what we're doing here is we have this A chord, and then we're keeping our pinky down, we're putting our ring finger on the seventh fret second string, and then moving this note, this C sharp, back one fret. So we're putting our index finger on the fifth fret third string. So it's A, D, like that, A, D7. And we're playing an alternating thumb roll, so it's super easy, three, two, five, one, three, two, five, one, and then open G string, pinch. So, together that sounds like this. I want to briefly speak about the backup that's being played in between the breakdown sections when the duel is happening between guitar and banjo. So after we play... That's what's normally being played. You're just playing this easy, simple, kind of uh, alternating bass, thump, uh, third string, fourth string, third string, fourth string. But in the fast section, you're going like this. So you're filling in the space with a fifth string and a first string in between each of those bass notes. Like that. 
And so for the C chord, what we're doing is like that. So we're playing the bass notes of the C chord, which is C and then G. I'm saying bass notes because this is what the bass player would be playing if there was a bass player. C, G, and in between each of those notes, we're putting a fifth string and a first string. Same for the D chord. So I'm putting on this D chord, and the exact same thing. And so for the C and the D chords, your melody notes or your bass notes are on the second string, and I'm getting that with my thumb, and then on the third string. It's actually a really nice lick if you play it outside of the context of the song too. So that's Dueling Banjos, Toon Fox style. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions at all, just leave something in the comment section either on Deering's website or on the Toon Fox website or on YouTube or send us an email at support at toonfox.com and we'll get right back to you. Thanks again to Deering for the opportunity to share this lesson with you. Check out their website at deeringbanjos.com. They make excellent instruments. Thanks again and hope to see you on the blog real soon.